Mario Tennis Aces is a tennis game. Actually, it's a rhythm game. No, no, actually, it's a fighting game. I'm not joking, Mario Tennis Aces completely surprised me when I played it for the first time with the level of depth on display, but even if that doesn't interest you, how about the fact that you can play tennis as a chain chomp? It's the best sodding game ever made. Obviously, that's an exaggeration. I had a lot of issues with this game, actually, which I'll dive into when I can, but rest assured, I do recommend this even if you aren't a fan of tennis, for this is not a regular tennis game. Spoilers all right, okay, nice. Sure, you have singles and doubles and use action buttons to rally a ball back and forth over a net until one player wins a set four times unless you tie on the third point while playing as <laughs> But if I could compare this to any other kind of game that isn't in the same genre, this is almost like the Smash Brothers of tennis games in terms of the basics being that accessible but the ins and outs being actually kind of difficult to master. You have different swings to work with, all allocated on the face buttons as you move around the court. There's a straight, fast, flat shot, a lob or drop shot to get the ball close to the net or further away from it, a slow, curving slice shot, and a standard topspin shot for a high trajectory and bounce. If you hold the button long enough before the ball hits your racket, you gain a charge shot for more power and if that's all you're interested in, the game is totally playable like that to an extent. When I first started playing doubles matches with Keris' kids, that's basically how we played for the first 15 or 20 minutes, and it was absolutely fine, it was a good time. But you don't only have those styles of shot though, this is Mario after all, and if you want to stand a chance against online players or the trickier single player missions, there's a lot of secondary moves to perform that change depending on what's going on during the match, and that can be used to your advantage if you're good with predicting your opponent's movements. You can flick the right stick or double tap a shot button to do a massively cool flip or sliding trick shot to reach another end of the court, not only quickly, but in style. When the conditions of the game allow, you also have a high-powered aimed zone shot that are activated depending on how much energy you have, which also dictates how much time you have to aim at a particular spot of the court to fire the ball. The energy for this kind of thing is gained by keeping rallies going, performing successful charge shots, blocking opponent zone shots successfully, and can be activated by yourself in the simplest method by having you perform a charge shot that's charged high enough to the point that the opponent won't be able to match a power shot to return the ball to you at your level that you charge to. This opens up the star jump for you, which can then either be used for a fast standard overhead shot, or your energy can be spent on aiming a zone shot. You also have the chance to leave your energy to build up so full to the point that you can activate the final smash of Tennis Aces, but despite the unique animations, this is exactly the same for all players, and once again, it's just another aimed zone shot, which gets activated in any game constantly. Really not worth it in my opinion, but I'll explain why in a sec. The more back and forth you can keep up, the more energy and can build up, and the more energy you both build up, the more chances you either have to zone shot, or even hold the zone shot button down without the ball near you to slow down time, either helping you block their zone shot at the right moment or helping you reach the other end of the court quickly without doing a sliding trick shot, and this essentially turns a simple game of tennis into a game of chicken on who will use all of their energy first and what they will choose to use it on during the match. Will you waste it? Will they waste it? Are you desperate enough to get that winning point or will you save your energy for another time when you need to protect your score? It's surprisingly strategic actually and can make many of the matches extremely tense because you never know when the opponent's energy is up if they're going to actually do something or not. But yeah, that insane special full energy shot, it isn't worth the time it takes to charge up to full in my opinion, not only because it's the exact same thing as an aimed zone shot which is disappointing enough as it stands, a more interesting spin would have been nice like having unique obstacles or attacks appear for the opponent to dodge or something, but since it is the same as the zone shot, well, that happens constantly during every match pretty much and it never takes more than a good 20-30% to 30 of your energy to aim a shot accurately where you want it to go, making all of that build up and time that you get to aim the fully charged special zone shot not worth it at all if you ask me. The only, I repeat, only time I found it useful were when I just so happened to have a fully charged energy bar ready for when the opponent either special hits me or uses a zone shot of their own. Not only resulting in an automatic successful block of a ridiculously fast ball hit, but also allowing me to return their hit with an aim shot of my own and basically guaranteeing I win that set. But this happened rarely for me, especially in single player. I maybe used this tactic three times in total in the campaign mode from start to end. But why did I say earlier that Mario Tennis Aces was like a fighting game. Well, it isn't entirely, but there is one mechanic present that's like a fighting game I actually really loved, the racket durability. Every time you return a zone shot at the wrong time or do things a little questionably in general, you lose a fair amount of health for that racket. Once you run out of it, the racket breaks, which means that you automatically lose that round. In single player especially, this is bad, since if you don't have a backup racket to continue playing after losing that round, you get a game over and need to start all over again. And this isn't only a cool idea, but stops players from just spamming the swing buttons when an opponent performs a zone shot at them, because unless
unless you mastered the real time timing, that's a mouthful, of returning the ball without slowing down time yourself and using your energy, you will need to use a fair amount of your energy to do it, otherwise you'll either miss that shot, lose a lot of racket health by spamming the shot back, or maybe even break the racket. It plays into the whole game of chicken I was talking about earlier. An intense match of Mario Tennis Aces is all about testing each other's confidence and breaking each other's spirits, forcing the other players to waste their energy on racket durability at the best moment so that you can smack back and win. Even better in single player, if you fail a tennis match or mission, you still get XP to make Mario stronger and make things a tiny bit easier for you on your next try, so that's appreciated. Something else I like, off subject for a second though, is the mode that allows you to play the game like Wii Tennis. It's cute, it's nostalgic for me, and it's really fun, shut up. Big Ball's my favourite. But hey, when it comes to the single player content though, which you've been seeing throughout most of this video, I would not recommend this game to everyone solely on that. In multiplayer this game is a riot, and single player can be fun sometimes, but overall this is definitely a multiplayer party tennis game, and the single player adventure mode can really feel tacked on at points. Don't go crazy though, it's not the worst thing I've ever experienced, I did enjoy it, but I don't think it was that great, and I had ups and downs of quality all over the damn place. To start off with, the story. Now, I am fully aware that this is Mario, and the story is never the focus, but you know what? If a game gives me a decent amount of dialogue and other nonsense, I feel like I'm in a position to criticise what the game gives me. Half the time with Mario, you can't criticise the story because what little story there is is so simplistic, enjoyable, and never a focus. But here, it is a bit of a focus, so let's discuss. The story in a nutshell is about a tennis racket demon called Lucian. Are you still here? Fantastic. And you never see or hear anything from it aside from when it possesses Waluigi, Wario, and Luigi. Apparently it was destroyed a long time ago by another tennis god named Asta, and he talks to you off screen all the time just telling you to get five power stones to stop the other guy. Well, first of all, these two characters are some of the most forgettable and pointless in the Mario universe, and their impact in the world is so minimal I had to look up their names multiple times for this script alone. And secondly, yeah, it's dumb, but that's not what I have a problem with. The problem I have is how I didn't think the game capitalised on the funnier aspects of this setup at all. The dialogue is never interesting or funny like in Mario RPG titles, there's barely any character to go around, and I admit it is hilarious to see the characters nonchalantly react to a seemingly bland and basic area have a ready and working tennis court inside them like a bloody forest, but that joke gets old after the first time you hear it. Which is how I felt for pretty much every other attempt of humour or drama if you can believe that. I get it, it's Mario and it's tennis, you can't expect goddamn Ayn Rand. But like I mentioned, Mario RPG game characters and dialogue have been fantastic in the past, as have visual gags in other basic Mario platformers. It's even managed to be emotional in the past, so why this game fell so flat in the forgettable category when Mario and tennis has infinite amounts of comedy potential I couldn't tell you. And the game throws you straight into the story mode once you begin it, so it clearly wants you to experience it. Uh, oh, and that's another thing, everyone in this game is an asshole. Yes, exactly like in Mario Sunshine, where half the residents deliberately hide the most important items in the world that keep their own town alive and won't give them back to the town unless Mario does something for them. We have an end of the world scenario in Mario Tennis Aces at play, while everyone feels like it's a great idea to keep battling you with tennis. I agree, with Mario's enemies I think that's pretty funny to think that's what's going on, but on the other end of the spectrum, Donkey Kong is a friend of ours in this game, yet he doesn't let us through the forest, and our Koopa Boatman doesn't let us through unless we beat him either. Do you want me to save the world or not? You can tell me I'm looking too deep into this all you want, but with Mario being so simple as it stands, you'd think there'd be more comedic reasons to battle everyone with tennis, and a funnier reason for the world ending, not having some unseen evil possessed racket be the crapping bad guy. Also, you're stuck with Mario throughout the whole adventure mode, which is fine, but every other character in the other modes of the game have different specialised stats of their own, as do the characters in Crash Team Racing for its story mode. Hell, even Mario Kart itself has different character and kart variations to pick your playstyle for the single player. I love you Mario, but you're a little bit chubby and I want to pick someone else, okay? Yeah, the adventure mode unlocks you more courses for local multiplayer, and the story mode itself does take you through a big series of beautiful locations with fittingly energetic music and many different obstacles to avoid and spice up the simple matches of tennis up quite a bit. But is this the selling point of Mario Tennis Aces? No bloody way. Okay, well I can't end things negatively for Adventure Mode, because like I said, I did love a few things, like the story only bosses, and the special one-off stages that test you in completely different ways for shot positioning and things to dodge, etc. And there are even some obstacles in some of the story missions you can use to your advantage, like in the Boo Mansion. See those mirrors there? Instead of them being a nuisance that spits the ball back at you, how about instead you wait for one of them to float to the top, and then smack your ball into the lower mirror, causing the ball to return to you from a higher place, which then gives you a chance to smack the ball across the court 
difficult and the fastest overhead shot you can manage. Boss battles are really cool as well, not only for the dodging segments when you use trick shots to flip over obstacles, but also in the fact that you don't only have the racket your ability to deal with, but also a time limit. Instead of a character health bar, whenever you get hit or miss a boss's shot, you lose a chunk of seconds from the battle, making it harder and harder to beat them in time. Which is a simple and elegantly tense solution to make the bosses stand out without adding a fluffy separate health bar mechanic or something just for these moments. The little optional side missions in the story as well don't only change up the game and how you play it enough to be a decent distraction, but mostly reward you with extremely useful racket upgrades if you wish to unlock them, which aren't only stronger for the matches themselves, but also stack on top of your previous racket giving you a safety net in case your current racket breaks, at the cost of much lower durability and power for the next racket in your stack. It's almost like the better you get at the game, you can keep the bonus of the strongest racket without having to resort on your other rackets that are weaker but haven't broken yet. And hey, they ended up teaching me brand new ways to play with basic shots in the game and how they can be exploited on the fly, for example, using a high and back of the court lob shot when your opponent's energy level is too low and they're near the front of the net, meaning that they have to run to the ball, which then makes the ball return to you in a high curve, leaving them open for your own zone shot or charged overhead shot that they will never be able to block in time. These missions teach you to read the players, and even now I'm reading up things online about advanced techniques like counter shots for specific coloured ball returns and stuff that I had no idea about. So if you love a bit of depth in simple multiplayer games, this will be a tinker fest for you. The central gameplay and mechanics may be great though, but Christ it can feel very much overdone, especially in single player. Many matches are not only the best of three for each set, but best of three for each round of those sets, including tiebreaker rounds if you both win one match from each set, meaning that you have to reach seven points first in order to win the tiebreaker. Does that sound like a lot to you? My god it is. I'm not a tennis expert or anything, so I don't know how it's done in the real world exactly, but in this game, with the special moves and everything, some missions can last you over 30 minutes, and that's insane. Especially if you eventually lose the entire game at the very end and you have to start the mission all over again. I understand you need longevity of a tennis game from somewhere if you only want single player, but this is a bit overkill in my opinion, especially with that match against big bloody buggery boom boom on the last world. Difficulty is one thing, but throwing you into a match with advanced AI while forcing you to deal with randomly spawning and moving bombs that track your position and go off at random times to stop you from doing anything for a good second isn't fair whatsoever, it's totally random. Do you miss the ball or do you run towards it and get bombed, meaning you'll miss it anyway? You can't control this at all, and no joke, I was stuck on this match in particular for over an hour easily. Even when I got to the game I eventually won, there were so many matches that turned into deuce, advantage, deuce, Deuce, advantage, deuce, advantage, going back and forth forever as we did zone shots back at each other to keep pushing the score in our favour. It got extremely boring and was insanely difficult, which are the two worst things to feel in any video game. And what does all of this lead you to at the end of the story mode? A thank you message, and then a new bonus section in the pause menu. And these bonuses, they allow you to either start the game from the beginning, or watch a handful of cutscenes, one of which is this long. You're having a tossing laugh, aren't you? So yes, Mario Tennis Aces, the single player stuff is fun enough, but do not get this game solely for that. This game shines in the multiplayer, so if you want a great party game on the Switch with surprising depth for experienced players while being accessible enough for anybody to jump in, that also includes a flawed but serviceable single player, grab this game whenever you can. I don't think it's a rush to buy it now, and I know that Nintendo never really drop their prices despite how old a game is, but do consider it, it's a really good time. If it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy friggin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Oh, this lighting is dreadful. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video on Mario Tennis Aces, and special thanks to all the names you can see scrolling past me right now who help support this channel via Patreon. I really hope that Nintendo doesn't take this video down or strike it or something for using that, what, 10 second cutscene of Mario writing his hat logo on the screen, but you'd be surprised what Nintendo have been capable of in the past. Yeah, they've done some crazy stuff. Uh, I heard one time that they even copyrighted the pipe noise, you know, the brum, 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 brum. Apparently if you used that in the past, you'd get attacked by Nintendo for that, so I'm hoping to God nothing happens. I, I can't imagine how pissy they must be about that. But anyway, here's an extra special thanks to the top tier supporters from Patreon as well. Omama2, Basil, Gamerman, I Have a Portal Gun, Robert Alamsha, Oblivion Rising, William Sanborn, Exopaz, Matthew Hubble, Zakari, Mills Kahai, Binary Code, Kirsten B, QB, Cyberpunk Symphony, Thomas Olsen, Nathan Young, Ellen Rilpley, Josh at Van Hamburg, Jezebel, James Nardiello, also known as The Game Shed on YouTube, Daniel Daniel Lee on DC Dungeon Master, Braden Kenny, Mitchell Reed, Jane Ives, and AD Thornton Smith. Thank you so much, every single one of you.